Part 1 Ancient Origins Journey back to 1887 and the American countryside of Pennsylvania. During 19th century America, there lived a person named Howard Howie Scream. He practiced science in order to create the world's first toast oven machine. He began testing the device on himself late at night while the townspeople were asleep. His wild vocalizations frightened them to the core and they asked him to leave the country. Howie, however, would not. Finally, the Edisons were summoned to record the noise so that Congress would pass legislation banning Howie from the country. The Edison family has a long history of recording sound. Long before they had fled the state due to taxation reasons, fortunately the people managed to find a mighty Edison named Thomas. As the inventor of the phonograph, he used the phonograph to record Howie's rapid shrieks. When the congressman heard it, the whole building instantly erupted into chaos. After the dust settled, the survivors banned Howie from America and ordered the recordings destroyed. Mr. Thomas B. Edison complied. But one copy remained. Bert, sir. Red Surgeons. Generations later, on a cold 1926 night, a rogue group of youths, engaged in unlicensed festivities, outside a decrepit building, on the Pennsylvanian prairie. Due to sinister influences, seven of them ventured into the basement of the building, using nothing but a flashlight to light the way. They would never publicly speak of what they found, down there, but from that day on, friends would say they were slightly different. A somewhat crazed look in their eyes, and a greenish glow surround them at all times, as well as a scent, of sulfur and rotten eggs. It was not until 1942, that an extremist sound editor, named James Adolf Dufelbug von Bunsenburner, was set to work on an upcoming movie. The title of that movie was Casablanca. He inserted the recording found by his peers and himself into a pivotal scene. A kiss is just a kiss, a sigh is just a sigh. No matter what the future brings as time goes by. Sam, I thought I told you never to play. The results were predictable. At each screening during the nationwide premiere, riots broke out and spread across the country. The military was finally called to stop the troubles. In the end, the casualties were counted in the millions. The movie, while a commercial failure and box office disappointment, due to the violent demise of its target demographic, became a cult classic along with its iconic sound, in underground circles. Let me speak, I talk much better. Douchebag. Over the following decades, the recording was kept among the followers of Poifelbeck von Bunsenberger, only occasionally resurfacing to cause civil unrest among the general populace. But in the 1990s, the self-proclaimed sarcastic generation believed the world was finally ready, and they included the sound in mass quantities of all kinds of media. In video games, such as Lockhart the Tomb Raider, Movie films such as True Romans and music songs such as the Mustard Song. Uh, 
By the end of the decade, the recording escaped the confines of its medium and began reproducing itself in the wild, culminating in the so-called 911 terrorist attack. The consequences were dire. The consequences were dire. What? What? Why are you imitating me? Why are you imitating me? Stop doing that. Nobody thinks it's funny. Nobody thinks it's funny. I think it's funny. Well, I guess you are nobody then. Lemao, don't even try to be sassy. You don't even sound human. Yes, I do. I sound just like them. <laughs>